Hello everybody and welcome back to Vet Math, where we go through this amazing veterinary medicine journey, thinking of it as a study session among friends, students and just other veterinary medicine enthusiasts. So let's go. Today we will continue our journey on Anatomy 101 through the basics, division of the animal body, and this time it will be part three, back and chest regions. As always, we will begin with the terms, so you can stop the video here if you want to write these down or just take a screenshot. Uh, we will begin with the regions of the dorsum, regionus dorsi, so basically the back regions. We have just three here, so this part will be relatively simple and straightforward. Okay, so now we have everything in color, not just the terms. So first of all, we have the number 23, thoracic vertebral region, which is right here. Now this is the region of the vertebrae of the spine that uh, connect to the ribs. Now you know that some of the ribs um, also connect to the sternum, which would be right here. Now not all the ribs connect to the sternum, but this will be mentioned way later in the future. But so that you would have heard it at least, I just mentioned it. Now also 23 in yellow, but this little dot right here, uh, this is this region, it's interscapular region, basically um, the region between two scapulas, um, so one scapula would be here and the other one on a different lateral side, um, and the last one is the lumbar region, regio lumbalis, which is right here. So this is a region between uh, the thoracic and the pelvic region. So it's right here in green 24. Okay, so we have the exact same thing here, only on a whole animal, so that it would be easier for you to imagine. Again, the interscapular region, the region between two scapulas, which you can see right here. This is the scapula. So we are looking right now at the animal from the left side, just as before, and on the right side we would have another scapula, so this region would be interscapular. Again, thoracic vertebral region or dorsocostal region. Um, again, we have the vertebrae right here um, that are connected to the ribs, and you can see this very well right here. Uh, that every single one of the vertebrae are connected to the ribs, and it also is mentioned as the dorsocostal region, um, because as we talked about before uh, in the first lecture, uh, dorsal means back, right? So on top of something. So costal or coste is ribs in anatomy or in Latin, so we are above the ribs, so that's why this region is also called dorsocostal. And again, the last one, the lumbar region right here between the thoracic and the pelvic regions. Okay, so we just finished the first part of our lecture. You can take a break, get yourself a snack, and we will move on from the back regions to the chest regions. So we entered the part two of today's lecture, we, which are the pectoral regions or regions of the chest or regionis pectoris. Uh, these are the terms. Again, you can stop the video here, write these down, take a picture, whatever you'd like. Uh, I know that there are uh, a little more terms than in the first part, but I put here everything that you might need. Uh, not all of them are mentioned in different literature, but if you go through different sources, then this is the most I can give you, and these basics should be more than enough. Um, so you have all the Latin and English terms here, and we will go to them now one by one in the next slide. 
uh, the ones that we will be focusing on are um, highlighted in green. So first we have the coastal region, which is plain and simple, right? The region where the coastal uh, or the ribs are. So right here in yellow. Then we have the pre-scapula region. So the region uh, before the scapula. And the scapula is the big flat bone where the shoulder connects. Then we have the sternal region right here, which is uh, the most ventral part of the chest or pectoral region, because nothing is below this apart from the legs, but the belly ends and the chest end, ends here. Uh, so the sternal, again, how I said uh, that the ribs, not all of them, as you can see, because some ribs do not connect to the sternum right here, but most of them do. And uh, this is also associated with the pectoral region. And again, we have the coastal arc, which is uh, right here, as you can see. Right here basically the arc of the ribs, nothing <laughs> more difficult, just the arc of the ribs. Okay, we are up close and personal. So um, I wanted to zoom in on this picture a little bit because this diagram didn't have all the terms and all the places that I wanted to mention to you. So I did a little more drawing on this if you will um, now the interscapular region as i already mentioned is the region below uh, between the scapula but uh, this is the one with the thoracic and the dorsum region so this is not in the pectoral region but it's still here so uh, think of it as repetition now the prescapular region the one that we need is the region uh, before the scapula, right here, this whole side. Then we have the whole scapula region. So basically everything, if you were to look at the animal from the side, so the skin and uh, all uh, the muscles on top of the scapula would be the scapula, scapula region. Uh, then we have the scapular supraspinal region. Think of it as the super, the superman of the scapula. Uh, so basically the scapula has like a little uh, uh, mountain on top of it. Uh, this would be um, the literate way of saying this. Um, but it has a ridge or a crest on top of this big flat bone. So the area before the crest or the ridge is the supraspinal. And the area after the crest is intraspinal. Uh, now, I know that this is confusing because spine is what you would more normally say to talk about the vertebrae of our back, right? But uh, in the Latin, this is regio infraspinata, and uh, spinata means spine or crest. So the terms are sometimes confusing, but you can also think of it as the back uh, or the spine of the scapula. So I think this will be even easier to remember. And the last one that I wanted to talk about is the scapular cartilage region, regio cartilagini scapulae. This is right here. Now the scapula has cartilage on top of it, uh, which you wouldn't see on um, bones that are let's say in your classes, anatomy classes, because cartilage uh, often doesn't go well through the curing process of the bones. So it usually just falls off or is uh, worn down, but uh, the cartilage is there and you need to remember this region as well, which basically is uh, like the dorsal part of the 
scapula. Another um, little detail and the little region of the scapula is the chromial region, uh, regio uh, chromialis. Um, only, this is very important and I wanted to mention this, uh, this region is only present in ruminants or carnivores. So basically dogs, cats and cows, goats only have this region because this is a little process uh, of, the, of that scapula spine that creates a right angle with that spine. So that's why there is another region mentioned, but not all animals have this, only ruminants and carnivores. If we're talking about home and farm animals, I don't know about uh, elephants or anything like that. But if we're talking about basic uh, veterinary medicine and basic anatomy, this is what you need to know. Only ruminants are and carnivores. Okay, so now we're looking at it uh, from a ventral view. So we have again the sternal region, uh, which is the sternum at the bottom right here. Then we have the costal region, which is the region of the ribs. So this is double on both sides. Then we have the coastal arc, which is right here. Uh, so we can think of it as a curve of the last ribs that are created. So these are all pectoral regions. Then we have the thing that I haven't mentioned before, but it's also one of the pectoral regions, is the cardiac region. So the cardiac region is the one where the heart lays below the ribs. So this is also very important. And I, another thing, which is thoracic memory gland uh, region. Uh, so basically the lactating glands and we also have the thoracic part of it because not all of the glands are on the abdominal part of the body. We have the first view on the thoracic part. Now we're looking at the lateral view again, just we are again a little more up close and personal. <laughs> so we have the presternal re region again. Uh, this is the region uh, before the sternum, which is right here. Um, it, for it to be easier to remember, you can think of it as the region just before uh, the shoulder because this is the scapula, this is where the shoulder is, and this is uh, the presternal region in green. Then we have the sternal region, which is in 26, and also here, because sternum goes all the way at the ventral part of uh, the thoracic cavity, so right here. Then we have the scapular region, the biggest one probably, looking from the side. We have the costal region, region of the ribs, a little further back, but the ribs are also going here, if you know that, right? But this is below uh, the scapula, so that's why the costal region is a little further back. And we have the cardiac region, which is visible from the ventral perspective. Here, again, the pristonal region, if we're looking now from the ventral side, so basically from the belly up. Um, then we have, again, the sternal region, because the sternum continues further back. Uh, and this is uh, the part where uh, ribs end where the lungs end. This is the part where diaphragm is and the diaphragm is um, like the wall between the thoracic cavity and the abdominal cavity. Then we have uh, again the costal region on both sides. This is double so this would be here and here but in order to uh, cover more regions this is not double here. 
And we have, again, the cardiac region right here. This is the part where the heart would be. As, and as you can see, not only the cardiac region is protected by um, the costal region, right, from the side, and if we were to look at the animal from the top, the vertebrae will be, would be there, right, the spine, but you also have uh, the sternum right above it, so or below it, if you will, but you don't really have um, a lot of places to reach the heart from, so the heart is very well hidden and this is amazing to me how well anatomy is thought out and because sternum is very hard bone it doesn't break easily so this is amazing to me okay so uh, this is the end of today's lecture again we have all the literature and sources where you can learn from uh, the second one is amazing and the first one is amazing, uh, but this is a book. And here we have the atlas, uh, which you can use when practicing your anatomy because you can choose different modes. Um, you can pin some of the parts. You can choose one area, let's say just the head area, or you can uh, make a quiz for yourself. Again, I'm not, not sponsored, but uh, this is a very good learning uh, place. Thank you for watching, and we hope that you will come back to BetMap next time. Have a great day, and leave your suggestions and comments below. Thank you.